Hi everyone, good morning. This is Mark Abalos, Globe Segment Head for Education, and welcome to the ninth episode of Esquela, um, our webinar series focusing on digital uh, learning and learning technologies. So today, we are very much excited for another episode, but before that, please don't forget po na mag-register and make sure that you have um, all the necessary requirements so that you can have your certificate of attendance um, right after the webinar. Plus, also, we will be raffling GCash credits and slots to the online uh, Esquela training program. So, this is a self-paced course on digital learning for teachers po na nagpre-prepare pa rin up until this moment at hindi pa rin confident when it comes to their teaching. So, um, today, I am uh, very, very excited because we have uh, a friend who's uh, joining us from Microsoft. So before that, um, let me just introduce um, our guest for today. So he is currently the Education Channel Manager of Microsoft Philippines, and he has a consistent track record of success in working in the information technology industry, having won several awards through the years and has worked with the leading technology partners spanning from distributors, of course, solution vendors, device brands, and the like. So prior to this stint in Microsoft, Paolo, has worked for one of the largest FMCG conglomerates in the Philippines, and he has a strong education background with, a, with an MBA from the Asian Institute of Management and a degree in finance from the De La Salle University, Manila. So apart from his corporate um, job, Paolo is also the CEO of two business startups in the food and health supplement industry. He is also involved in, the in, in philanthropic activities as he previously served as one of the board of directors of the Junior Chamber International Manila, a non-profit organization that focuses on leadership development and charitable activities. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, um, let me welcome Mr. Paolo Balinas. Hi, Pao. Hi. Uh, good morning, Mark. Thank you for the long time. Oh, nga, long time. And uh, I just realized, kailangan ko i-shorten yung introduction na yun. <laughs> <laughs> medyo, ina- medyo kinakapos nga ako ng hininga. Well, well really. But it's so okay, Pao. I'm very excited. Kamusta ka muna bago tayo mag-start? Kasi today, I believe you will be talking about digital technologies and collaborative, collaborative tools uh, for teaching and learning, of course, with the use of Microsoft, no? Yes, very excited to be part of the ninth uh, session of this Esquela campaign you've been And doing. mind you, ah, second season na namin to. Ah, second season. Wow, congrats. Yes. <laughs> An honor to be a part of it, no? Finally, Microsoft gets to share our, uh, our story then and how we're helping schools transform to this digital economy. Sige, bago ka mag, mag-talk, Pao, kamusta muna ang iyong break? I mean, like, not really break. Your work from home setup, paano ba? Ano yung regular day mo? Uh, how does it feel like, you know, going to to work online virtually? Or do you go to the office? Paano na bang setup ngayon? Hindi pa din. Uh, for almost two years, we're, we, we've always been working home. And I think, nag-adjust, fully adjusted na sa ganitong setup. And it makes us, makes us realize na, talagang work can happen regardless of uh, where we are, no? Maybe in the beach, at home, as long as we have access to good internet connectivity and a device, I, I think we can still be productive. Okay. There are also schools that are normally, like, you know, scared pa rin sa paggamit ng technology, but, you know, they're really forced to, to do that at this point, no? Next year, there's gonna be, like, trials down on... Um, face-to-face, limited face-to-face classes. So what are your thoughts on that, Pao? I think uh, it's about time na din, diba? that we explore also face-to-face classes. Kasi in other countries, they've already started to reopen schools. Uh, yung online education naman na to, I, I didn't really expect it to be forever. Diba? What I see uh, globally, from a global perspective, and here in the Philippines, is talagang magkakaroon ng hybrid learning. Meaning, uh, regardless kung nasan man yung student, may it be face-to-face or online, the, as long as the student can still access the content, learning can happen, I think we're more leaning towards a hybrid setup. Kasi iba pa din eh, kapag kasama yeah. mga, mga stu- uh, classmates mo, teacher mo, and maybe um, shifting to a more hybrid learning setup would be the future of education. Sige, abangan natin yan next year, but we're, we're very excited to hear you talk. So, 
Um, without further ado, again, guys, this is Paolo Balinas from Microsoft Philippines. Take it away, Pao. All right. Thank you again, Mark, and of course, Globe, for inviting me here. I'm very excited to be part of your ninth uh, Escuela session. And uh, today, I'm here for the next 45 minutes. I'm here to discuss effective digital technologies and collaborative tools uh, for engaging and teaching and learning. So uh, I'll share the, you know, the different programs that Microsoft is doing and the tools that we use to help schools adapt to a more digital environment. So, yeah. So I always start by sharing yung vision, education vision in Microsoft, diba? which is to empower uh, the students of today to create the world of tomorrow. So what's interesting about the field that we are in is uh, we are molding the future leaders of our country, of our world, di ba? So napaka-importante ng mga educators in uh, shaping the future of our world. Uh, before I dive in, di ba, kung ano yung mga programs, tools ni Microsoft, I'll share uh, research done in partnership with The Economist uh, in terms of how can we enable a better learning experience under this new education paradigm. So a lot of schools have made the transition, but the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the use and adoption of uh, virtual learning. However, there also are, are some challenges. Kumbaga, napansin nila because of this virtual environment, although students can access their learning material kahit nasan man sila, a lot of teachers, 60% of teachers realize na talagang nahirapan sila to keep their students engaged, di ba? they experience a huge drop in terms of engagement. Uh, apart from that, 60% of students feel that they are not prepared for the year ahead, made because unfam um, unfamiliarity of the school, of the, of the tool, uh, lack of access to a device, connectivity. And on top of that, 46% of students are very concerned about their potential job prospects post-graduation. Mainly because you know the pandemic has affected a lot of businesses. Uh, they needed to downsize, and at the same time, shifting in a shift in terms of the skills that they look for in terms of candidates. Um, however, there's also a plus side, right? Uh, based on the research, there's four key trends that are driving how education will be will be in the next years to come. One is it's a shift from instructor-driven to more personalized learning and student-centered learning approach. So what does this mean? Dati, kumbaga, one size fits all tayo. Uh, teacher is in front of the class, teaching students. Students simply passively consume the information. Ngayon, because of technology, we're able to customize and personalize the learning experience for each individual. Yung iba mas mahilig sa video, uh, iba mas mahilig sa audio, di ba? We can customize it based on their learning preference. And then the second one is flexible, interactive, and self-guided instruction. So ibig sabihin, uh, it's shifting, di ba? Humbaga, students are more actively engaged in their learning experience. Uh, meaning, uh, you know, it's flexible. They can access the content uh, live or offline at their own uh, pace. The third one is there's a growing need for student instructor feedback and peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. So again, because of this virtual setup, it's still important to have that connection, that tool wherein students can uh, collaborate with each other. And at the same time, teachers can give feedback kung paano mag-improve yung student based on their results of the quizzes. And lastly is the rise of learning analytics, predictive analytics, and data visualization. Ano ibig sabihin nito? So in the past, nalalaman natin na babagsak tong student na to for the subject after the final or midterm exam. Now, because of tools, technology, we are able to identify leading indicators. Bago pang mangyari yun, you know, we're able to see how, what are the leading indicators that can predict the outcome of the student. So halimbawa, uh, kung dati grades lang ang basihan natin, now we can even determine uh, what in open ba niya yung uh, resource material anong oras niya ino open uh, baka naman bumabagsak siya because he or she is not opening the the resource material or baka late in the morning na siya early in the morning na niya na access so pagod pagdating sa school so these are 
the, these are the examples of the, the use and power of technology on how we can improve student learning outcomes. So kung dati, uh, you know, we were caught of surprise, diba? Uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of schools were forced to respond. Umaga, very uh, tactical. Kung ano yung available, they're gonna get it right away, diba? And now, slowly, schools have started to adapt, uh, adapt a more digital setup. And now it's really about reimagining. Kumbaga, like I mentioned kanina, hybrid learning is here to stay. Uh, basically, you know, learning can happen regardless of where the student or teacher may be. So I always tell schools it's really about reimagining the way you do your uh, school operations from enrollment to teaching uh, and so on. It's really about how can you uh, embrace this digital uh, setup in your environment and how you can actually use it to your advantage. So how can we reimagine higher education? First, it needs to be flexible, meaning it can happen both in person and remote. Diba? In case na we're forced to go on a lockdown again, schools must be able to quickly, um, schools must be able to quickly, what do you call this, adapt to our, our, our new setup. No? The second one is personalized. So again, we should be able to uh, customize the content, the curriculum, uh, based on the insights that we get from each student. The next one is it needs to be engaging. So again, uh, maybe through game-based game learning, uh, asynchronous, asynchronous. And lastly, it needs to be inclusive, meaning uh, you know, even students who have limited internet connectivity or... Uh, you know, only mobile devices to access the content, it should, they should still be able to access all of these learning contents, right? So next one is a day in a life, diba? So talagang umiba yung uh, day in a life natin for education. Uh, in the past, diba, we had to commute and go to school, stuck in traffic and so on. Now, because of all of these uh, digital technology, all of these tools, as the moment that you wake up, you can already check your schedule. You can already uh, log on to your class and you know do your homework assignment and uh, answer it on the go. Diba? So again, it really opened up a new, uh, new possibilities on how we are to uh, implement education in our country. So whenever I talk to schools, I always start by discussing our education transformation framework. So we base it on four key pillars, di ba? Kasi pag-uusap po yung mga schools, common question is, anong pinakamagandang uh, LMS? Anong pinakamagandang school information system? So before I you know, share the, the solutions that Microsoft has to offer, I always start by basing it on these four key pillars. Uh, because based on this framework, this was a study done by Microsoft in collaboration with IDC, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, did the research to understand ano ba yung best practices na ginagawa ng mga schools across the globe in implementing uh, effective and lasting digital transformation sa schools. No? So the first one is commonly uh, overlooked, di ba? Uh, which is leadership and policy. Napaka-importante for a school to ensure na the leaders of your school have a vision for change. Napaka-importante then for them to implement, di ba? A proper... Oh, shucks. Sorry. Napaka-importante then for, for them to implement uh, proper uh, policies, guidelines in place to ensure na mag, uh, the, the, the changes that they implement would last years to come. The next one is modern teaching and learning. So in modern teaching and learning naman is more on uh, aligning what is being taught in schools to what is being sought after in the industry. So because of, uh, you know, because of the widespread adoption of technology, their industries, businesses are shifting in terms of the, the skills, the competencies that they look for in students. So uh, very important for schools to uh, align kung ano yung hinahanap ng industry to what uh, kung ano hinahanap ng industry to, to what the content and curriculum is being taught in, in schools. 
The third one is intelligent environment. So we live in a data-driven economy, right? So very important for a school to ensure the security of the student information, that there are no, no cybersecurity threats that happen. And lastly is in order to uh, ensure student success, there also needs to be a parallel investment in terms of educator and student enablement. So very important for uh, schools to, to think about how can we upscale, how can we enable our, our students and teachers to use these digital technologies, right? So before choosing the right tool, it's really about um, how can we uh, align it to this education transformation framework. So in Microsoft, it's really about enabling uh, flexible, personalized, and collaborative learning in Microsoft Teams, right? So improving student engagement, integrating learning tools, and um, personalized learning. So what's good about this is uh, it allow our tools is accessible across multiple devices. So regardless kung gumagamit ka ng uh, mobile, sure. tablet, uh, browser, you can still access all of these learning content uh, online, right? And whenever we talk about uh, the right tool, the right platform, we always go back kung ano ba yung mga use case scenarios that uh, ano ba yung mga use case scenarios that you want to uh, adapt or you want to implement in a digital environment right so on common scenarios is when i talk to schools is they need a platform that can be a central hub for learning they need a platform that can provide a document library to share their files they need a platform to communicate to your students through instant messaging. They need a file, uh, the platform wherein they can conduct student assessments, quizzes, uh, to assess the learning outcome of students. Uh, hosting and recording virtual classes, providing analytics to improve learning outcome, personalized student learning, and lastly, connect to other education apps that you may be using, right? So in Microsoft, uh, we, I'll discuss you know, the next few slides is how can I transform your student learning with Microsoft Teams, right? So the first one is being the central hub for learning. So using Microsoft Teams, uh, through which is included in Office 365, it is considered to be the central hub for learning. Rather than use multiple applications for your learning, uh, for learning purposes, right? we consolidated everything in Microsoft Teams. So later I'll do a demo, but I'll show you a few screenshots. No? So the first one is how can it be a central hub? So, so kung teachers kayo, um, very important for you to be able to view and easily access lahat ng mga classes that you are a part of, right? So in Microsoft Teams, in one single dashboard, it will show you all of the classes that you are a part of. Uh, you can access all the files, all of your classes on the go, may it be mobile, tablet, or desktop, you can access it. And lastly is it serves as your central hub for all your learning needs. And I'll show you in a bit how that happens. So the second one is the common concern device. How can it provide my school with a document library to share and store files? So within Microsoft Teams, you can upload your class materials, um, you can upload your class materials in, in one central hub wherein students can simply download their you know, PDF files, PowerPoint presentations of the teachers, Excel spreadsheets. Uh, the next one is you can access multiple document types. So again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, maybe a PowerPoint presentation, PDF file, uh, you can upload it in the in, in Microsoft Teams, and it serves as the storage, central storage of the, all your files. And uh, you, can, you can share store files across your peers and um, your, your teachers. So the third one is collaborate and edit files together. So again, very important kasi in a distance learning setup that you still be able to connect with your peers uh, engage with them, and edit files together, right? So for example, if you're working on 
a group project, a PowerPoint presentation, uh, rather than have multiple versions of the file, diba? version one, version two, version three, and then you get lost. Ano ba yung pinaka recent version? In Microsoft Teams, uh, it comes with you're able to access your productivity apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and edit the files uh, real time. So meaning you'll be able to see all the changes that your uh, your peer made or your classmate made uh, real time. And in case that there are certain changes that you want to revert back, you can easily see who edited the document at what time, and you'll be able to recover old versions of the file. So again, it boosts productivity because regardless kung nasan man yung teacher, yung student, you'll be able to work on a document simultaneously. The next one is how can schools assess diba? whether or not natuto ba talaga yung student, they learned about the subject, and best way to do it is to be able to uh, create quizzes, polls, surveys to your students, right? So again, without leaving the platform, Microsoft Teams, you'll be able to um, access, are you as a teacher, you'll be able to uh, give assignments to your students, attach um, resource materials such as readme documents, video references. You can attach, you can de uh, de determine what grade you want to assign and who are you going to assign the assignment to. Um, next is easily capture and analyze feedback and monitor student submission. So again, in one hub, you're able to see who students have opened the file, who have submitted, or who haven't even opened it at all, diba? So dito, nalalaman mo who are uh, be behind, who are uh, lagging behind, and how you can help them um, in their learning experience. Baka naman, they're not able to submit the homework kasi hindi nila naintindihan, diba? So here, you're able to step in to see what's wrong and better assist them. The next one is, again, very important. How can we help schools host and record virtual classes? So within Teams, you're able to host a class, uh, record it, and at the same time, you're able to have it live, a live transcription happen. So what that means is if I'm speaking, the system can be able to transcribe what I am saying real time. And it has a speaker attribution feature wherein Kung si Paolo nagsalita, it already states Paolo's the one speaking. If it's Mark, it's Mark, right? Um, another one is the how can you keep students engaged, right? So we can keep students engaged using together mode. So if you notice this GIF, right? Um, it's as if you're mimicking a classroom environment. Magkakatabi tayo, seatmates. And, um, you know, it, it keeps it interesting. It keeps it engaging for the students. And lastly, is breakout rooms. So uh, again, in, in a normal face-to-face -face setup, ginagawa natin is my plenary session tayo, teacher discusses the main topic of the day, tapos you break out in smaller groups for group discussion, di ba? So nagagawa nyo din yan in a virtual environment wherein you can break them down into smaller groups, uh, groups of five, for example. You assign them a topic that they work on together tapos babalik na lang sila kapag tapos na yung uh, small group session, right? The next one is uh, providing student analytics in, on improving learning outcome, right? So how can you improve student analytics? Um, so like I mentioned kanina, uh, the way we measured students is purely on... Uh, the test scores that they get, diba? midterm, final exam, and then you know we only determine kung sino kailangan ng uh, special exam, remedial, and so, and so on. The power of technology is bago pa mangyari yun, we're able to uh, help a student no? because we are able to identify leading indicators. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So for example, imbis na grade lang ang basihan natin, we'll be able to monitor the digital activity kung gaano kadalas online yung student, kung ano yung uh, oras niyang in-open yung mga files, what files that she or she access, di ba? On time ba ang teacher magbigay ng feedback, right? So these leading indicators 
can potentially affect the student performance moving forward, di ba? So, baka naman pag nakita natin yung score ng isang student, mababa o bumabagsak. And then we find out kaya naman pala siya bumabagsak is because hindi niya na-open yung file, di ba? Or na-access niya yung file early in the morning. So, pagdating ng school, pagod siya, right? So, these are some of the tools, the, the power of technology on how we can improve student performance rather than focus only on the end output kumbaga, before it actually happens na predict natin at na address natin agad. Next is personalized student learning. So ang kagandahan ng technology is we are able to customize the student uh, learning experience. Kumbaga, it's a one size fits all. Now we're able to personalize it. So in, in this, you can see a digital notebook, di ba? So in this na you have a manual pen and paper, here we digitize that. Think of it as a digital notebook. So basically, you can provide your class notes in advance. Student, you can see as a teacher, di ba? Kung nag-notes ba yung students, ano yung what's running through his mind, di ba? And you can annotate and, uh, and write on the student's notes to give your remarks, to give how you can improve, and so on. And lastly is you can connect. So kung may mga uh, education apps kayo na ginagamit, for example, Kahoot, to, to gamify learning, you can connect that within Microsoft Teams. So even Moodle, if you're using Moodle, you can connect it in Microsoft Teams. So it removes the uh, requirement for you to have multiple apps open and condenses them in one single application. I'll be doing a short demo in a bit, but um, walking you through some additional features, diba? So because of this distance learning setup, um, it has impacted a lot of the mental health of students and teachers, diba? So very important for a teacher to understand ano ba yung mental state ng mga sujante ninyo, diba? So here, within Teams, you're able to automate, you're able to ask kung ano ba yung feeling ng student uh, during the day, di ba? So it asks them, how are you feeling today? Uh, you can see whether or not happy yung class, sad yung class, nervous. So if you notice before an exam, a final exam, nakikita mo nervous lahat. Uh, a lot of the students feel nervous. So here you can step in as a teacher and see how you can help Maybe they feel they're not prepared. So maybe having a separate session to help them prepare better would help them feel or remove their nervousness. Diba? So again, it's very important for them to be in the right mental state for them to be productive. The next one is empowering Filipino leaders, uh, readers. right? So with Microsoft Teams, uh, we're able to improve the learning uh, improve the reading progress of students. So during the recent, I think last or two years ago exam, Philippines ranked one of the lowest in terms of the reading comprehension, right? So with tools like Microsoft Teams, you're able to improve the learning, the reading progress of students. Uh, in the tool, you can upload a document. Students simply turn on their camera and uh, read a document aloud. Through uh, an AI feature, artificial intelligence feature, you're able to identify uh, wrong grammar by a student, may mispronounce ba siya, may tinanggal ba siya na word, di ba? And you can see the accuracy rate ng student. So basically, uh, through this, through the use of technology, you're able to improve the reading of students, their diction, and so on. I'll skip the video. And lastly, kung uh, mahilig yung school ninyo to hold webinars, right? Uh, mga parent-teacher conferences, um, student general assemblies. So we made it easier with Microsoft Teams. You can um, you know, upload your logo, uh, at the same time have a registration sheet, and then have a link where in, uh, invite uh, attendees register and you can monitor the attendance. So you can hope uh, Teams can host up to 300, 1,000, and up to 10,000 attendees. So it helps, um, you know, have uh, it helps schools host large-scale events for their parent-teacher conferences and so on. 
So, okay. I'll share my click-through demo. Kasi para mas ma-enjoy din natin. This is a better way, what better way to explain it than by actually showing you, right? How it is, um, it runs. So, 11. All right. So, I'll be walking you through a short um, click-through demo on how it actually looks like in Microsoft Teams for you to better visualize paano nyo magagamit sa inyong schools, di ba? So, if you have an Office 365 subscription, you simply go to office.com, you click sign in, right? Log in with your school credentials. Uh, it would ask for certain, um, you know, user credentials. And like I mentioned kanina, pwede nyo gamitin is yung, the download yung app or you can purely use it on a browser. So again, kahit mobile, tablet, uh, desktop, magagamit nyo yun. So this is a snapshot of the teacher dashboard that I mentioned, di ba? So kung ako teacher on algebra, physical science, in one single dashboard, nakikita ko na siya lahat ng classes that I am a part of. So by simply clicking the class, here I'm able to see uh, you know, a shared chat with all of my students. I could see the latest updates that, um, that happened within my, my specific class. Diba? And you can see multiple posts from um, assignments to um, the upcoming meeting, right? When's the next scheduled class? So you're able to see that. And what's good about this is if you notice other messaging apps is kapag naiwanan mo siya for um, you know, 5, 10, even an hour, nakikita mo there are 300 um, unread messages. So here within Teams, you're able to cluster them into uh, subject topics. Kumbaga, if there's a main topic, nakikita mo lang what are the subtopics under that. So nakikita mo my replies to that topic. So you're able to sift through the irrelevant information and only focus on kung ano man yung relevant sa yo. So you can see who commented uh, who commented uh, to that specific post. No? And next is meetings. So assuming na kailan mo magmeet sa classroom sa class mo, so you're able to do that. You'll be able to do that by clicking the calendar icon in the left. When you click the calendar icon. Um, you can, you know, see your schedule for the entire week, the day, and from here, if you want, you can see uh, what's your scheduled meeting for the next few hours, right? And if you want to uh, schedule a meeting um, with your class, you can click new meeting, and here you'll be asked, diba, to type in a title that uh, class follow up discussion, right? At the same time. You can either add um, a specific class or specific people you want to add. Diba? So, pag ko general, um, it sends a meeting invite to the entire physical science class. So, pag click ko ng send, everyone will receive uh, an email. At the same time, they'll also receive a calendar block within their own respective Teams channel. Right? So, when I click that, I can simply edit it if I want to edit uh, the meeting uh, the meeting options. For example, I put more details on meetings or if I want to limit yung mga mag-present, who is allowed to present, right? So uh, what we try to avoid is lahat ng students nag-aagawan kung sino nag-share ng screen. So you can do that. You have special controls. You can limit that to only you. Diba? So gagawin natin is only you are able to present, and then you click Save. So when you click Save, it's all done. You you go back sa meeting request, and then you can join. Diba? So pag click mo ng join, uh, you're connecting. You see how many people are in the meeting. And by simply clicking Join now, you'll be brought in sa meeting. Diba? So here, you'll be able to see yung attendance. Kung sino yung uh, in attendance, so you'll be able to see who's lacking, who's already online, diba? Uh, you can even download your attendance sheet 
So no more is the gun is the roll call na kailangan. Uh, Juan de la Cruz, nandito ka ba? So now you're able to uh, simply download an uh, attendance sheet wherein it logs what time nag-log in yung student, what time nag-log out, and so on. You can click more actions. By clicking more actions, you can start recording, right? So here, the red button that you see here uh, below um, is basically, uh, you know, it, it's a sign that you're recording. Okay. So next is you can have a, a together mode as if nandun kayo sa class, right? You're able to mimic a classroom setup in a virtual environment. So that's available, together mode. And by simply clicking the share, the share uh, tray tab, you'll be able to see, will you screen share ba or will you share a file? So you can simply upload the PowerPoint file, for example, that you'd want to share for your schools. And then here, nagpe-present ka, as this is presenter mode. So you'll be able to see the PowerPoint slide that you're sharing. And at the same time, nakikita mo kung sino nag-raise ng hand. So napaka-importante to keep it engaging, right? So here, students are able to raise their hand through an icon. And then nakikita nila, as a teacher, nakikita mo, Miss Ella would want to participate. So you can ask her to come off mute para for her, him or her to share his or her thoughts sa topic na pinapresent niyo. So next is by clicking share again, uh, you can do collaboration with whiteboard. So again, uh, sometimes iba pa din yung experience na, na you're working together, you're collaborating with your classmates, di ba? So here in um, Teams, you're, you'll be able to have a whiteboard. You can put post-its. Students can simply write on the whiteboard and add their thoughts and ideas on how they can brainstorm. Um, next is breakout rooms. Kanina na mentioned ko kanina yung breakout rooms. Kung may plenary session ka, how can you do it in a smaller subgroup setup? So by simply clicking this button, upper right, you're asked, di ba, how many rooms do you need and do you want it automatically assigned? Uh, kung may, you know, kung may 20 people and then you want four rooms, that's gonna be automatically assigned five people per room. So you can determine how many, di ba? So pag click mo to, you click create rooms. Automatically, nag-create siya ng room. And uh, you can add one more room, right? But syempre, you can also rename your room depending kung ano yung as a task that they need to do. So for example, for this specific room, they are going to talk about the great white sharks. You can simply rename the room. And the other naman, you can rename it to a different um, topic, for example. Pwede mo siya rename as the hammerheads. So if one group talks about the great white sharks, the other group talks about hammerheads. So as a teacher, you can click start the room. That was automatically sila mapapadala dun sa breakout rooms na yon. And then um, if malapit na yung uh, time for the breakout rooms, you can simply make an announcement. So pag gumawa ka ng announcement, you know, you can send them, hi class, you have three minutes to wrap up and send. So lahat sila mapapadalhan ng announcement na yon, and they would know, di ba, na they have three more minutes, so it's time to wrap up. So after three minutes, you could simply close the room, and then slowly, if you notice, dumadagdag ulit sila sa main plenary hall. So that's important, right? So if you want breakout rooms, you'll be able to make announcements and bring them back dun sa plenary hall mo. So next is um, you can format icon, right? So kung may announcement ka, you can make it bold uh, and so on. You can upload the file. So you can even do emojis, GIFs to make it engaging lang sa inyong class. Uh, some teachers even use the praise icon. So if you want to give badges sa mga students mo, you can do that. And let's talk about sh file sharing. So kanina I mentioned, diba, you can upload your class materials and multiple document file types. Diba? May it be a PowerPoint presentation, Word file, PDF, and so on. So here, um, in the class materials folder, hindi pwedeng ma-edit ng mga students yung mga files nandito. 
anything you upload here is only for viewing purposes. So the reason why we're doing it, this is para hindi ma edit yung mga important class material files, diba? So you could do that. And um, next is um, class notebook. So I mentioned kanina um, digital notebooks, diba? So as a teacher, you'll be able to uh, assign digital notebooks per individual, per student. And naikita mo, as a teacher, you can upload your, you can share your class notes in advance para students, you know, read through the cl today's class notes and they can, um, you know, they could read in advance or they can read after the class. Um, content library is what I mentioned earlier. You know, you could upload the um, content in advance. And what's good about this is you can personalize the learning. So each student, for example, si Adele Vance, may sarili siyang digital notebook. So as a teacher, na mo monitor mo kung nag notes ba yung students, what's going through their mind, and you can give remarks, di ba, on how he or she can improve. So here you can, you know, annotate, you can draw, you can write down your notes, write down your thoughts on how you can help your help the kid, help the student understand better, right? So you can draw and all. So next is, if you notice the I'm not moving to a different app, it's all done within one single hub. So we talked about post files, class notebook. Now talk about assignments. So in assignments, naman, is as a teacher, you can simply create an assignment and send it to all of your students. By clicking create, you pick assignment. So dito, you, you know, enter a title of the assignment that you want to give. Uh, lagay mo instructions, kailan ang deadline, uh, what do you need to do, you need to work with the partner, for example, and attach. you can attach multiple added resources, maybe a PDF file, a doc, document file, or even videos diba? that they can use as reference. So next is rubric. So very important for teachers to be able to grade and assess yung mga students. Nila, diba? So if you have an existing rubric, um, you can simply upload that. So for example, what's the grading criteria? Uh, excellent. What's the corresponding point? And so on and so forth. So it makes grading rubrics easier for schools to adapt. And you can simply attach that to the assignment tab. And you know, uh, you can pick a student kung whole class of chemistry ang i-assign mo or specific students only. You can do that um, by simply clicking on the students, or if you want all, you could simply choose a class, right? So by simply clicking assign, uh, lahat ng sujante is manu notify, manu notify about the new assignment. They would get a ping, a notification. They would see it in their calendars, on the deadline. So yeah. So as a teacher, napak importante for you to be able to give immediate feedback. So within Teams, you're able to give feedback, uh, you know, great work, excellent work, and a corresponding score for that. Um, so here, within the Grades tab, you could see ano yung mga scores ng mga students, di ba? Who has uh, pending to submit, sino yung nakapag-submit na, who have returned, and so on. So kumbaga, in one dashboard, you're able to see the overall performance ng mga students mo. So by clicking all teams again, you go back sa dashboard, and then this is one of the features specific to education. To education. So insights, it's dito sa insights, um, like I mentioned kanina, meron student analytics tayo ng gagawa with, um, my, with Microsoft Teams insights. So here, nalalaman natin yung digital activity ng mga students natin. Imbis na final grade lang, nalalaman natin kung active ba sila online, kung na-access ba na ni mga files. So this is an example. So here, in the Insights tab, you'll be able to track student activity. Diba? So dito sa track student activity, nakikita mo lahat ng students who are a part of that class, um, ano yung file na in-open niya, tsaka anong oras. So bakit importante to? Important because uh, you're able to see kung gano'ng ka-active yung student in accessing the files, in reading in what time. 
Kasi like I mentioned kanina, baka naman mababa grades niya is because 2 a.m. na niya na-open yung file. Diba? So pagod pagdating sa school. Uh, you're able also to see um, that the home the the files that he or she opens um, to to assist diba? to improve better learning outcomes. So when you go back to overview, you can also check assignment status. So dito nakikita natin, diba? not just yung mga nakapag-submit na, but even a timeline of all of the upcoming assignments. Kung baga kailan yung mga assignments na to, uh, due, and at the same time, uh, sino nakapag-view pa lang, sino nakapag-submit na pabalik, uh, and so on. Sino yung late, and so on. Diba? So if a student, binyu lang niya, uh, nalalaman ng teacher yan. O ba't binyu lang niya, ba't hindi niya tinapos? Baka nagpa-procrastinate to. So you can talk to the student directly, and so on. So again, gives you more analytics uh, in terms of the student learning. No? And lastly is the analytics on grades. So dito nakikita natin kung yung specific class na yan, ano ba yung average grade ng class na yan? If nakita natin na you know, low 70s, maybe it's not the students that have an issue. Maybe it's the learning style that you're delivering to your students. Diba? So as a teacher, it gives you insight paano ka makakapag-improve. So we go back to overview, all teams, and then we go to another class, urban planning. So a lot of schools uh, use third-party apps, diba? like Moodle. So we'll give an example of Moodle. Um, if you're using Moodle, you could simply click the plus sign, search um, you know, the term Mo M Connect, Moodle Connect, and um, you could select a tab that you want to add, kung ano yung class na gusto mong i-add, what are the course details that you want to add. And then in a few clicks of button, Again, it's embedded na. Kung, baga, kung may third-party app ka without leaving the platform, it's added as one of the tabs na lang dito sa Microsoft Teams. So it shows you, di ba, um, kung how you experience it in, in the, in the third-party app, it's all brought uh, here within the Teams platform. The main reason we did this is we do understand na iba-ibang schools may kanya-kanyang preference na mga education apps. So... We simplify the process rather than you use multiple apps and have it a lot open. You could use it in one central hub. So this is a short demo of uh, how we integrated a different uh, platform in Microsoft Teams without leaving. No? So I think I'm almost out of time. That's a quick, quick demo lang of uh, how Microsoft Teams can help your institution. And I'll go back to my slide. Um, last few na lang. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Wait. Uh, sorry, reshare my screen. Uh, I'll have a last few slides. Okay, it's the last few slides. So I, I tackled earlier yung, um, you know, the different problems that we are solving in Microsoft Teams and how this platform can help you. Um, so the main, the main essence is why complicate collaboration, right? So kung gumagamit kayo ng app for chatting, sharing of files, uh, meetings, and so on, um, you know, you, you, don't, you don't need to use or complicate uh, the use of multiple apps. You can do it in one central hub, in one platform. Um uh, share your screen. Bro. Reshare it again. Apologies for that. Yeah. Ayan. Okay, it's back. So again, the main essence is why complicate um, you know, the need for collaboration. Kung iba -iba yung chat na ginagamit ninyo, meetings, you could all do that in one central hub. And um, if you're already using the Microsoft Office, Windows, we have a bundle. It's called Microsoft 365A3. Um, basically, it, it combines Office, Windows, device management, and Minecraft into one single bundle. And um, 
basically the way we license it is in business, we count the number of students you have in your institution, one is to one. What we do is we simply count the number of faculty and staff that you have. So for example, yung uh, faculty and staff ninyo is 100. In business, you have, for example, your, your school has 100 faculty and staff and 4,000 students. In business, you pay for one is to one, 4,000 Microsoft bundle licenses. We only count the number of faculty and staff. So 100 yan, only subscribe to 100, but you'll be able to cover for the entire campus, your laboratories, your students, and everything that I mentioned earlier kasama sa suite, no? So that's because of the student use benefit. Um, for every paid license, there's 40 free licenses for the school, uh, for the students rather. So kung office yan, Windows yan, Minecraft yan, one is the 40 is the ratio that we follow. And on top of that, each of the 40 students we begin ng free up to 15 licenses ng office. So uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint can be uploaded or downloaded to up to 15 personal devices. So maybe a laptop, five mobile, five tablet. You can be productive regardless of which um, form factor, device form factor to use. So again, a uh, long uh, presentation, but I'd love to get to interact and help your school more. If you want to know more about the education transformation framework, um, you can email me at paulobal at microsoft.com or reach out to any globe representative and we have a lot of free training kung problem in is how to um, how teacher enablement how to get familiarized with the tool that that i showed earlier can be accessed through our free training at education.microsoft.com if you finish two hours of content uh, you'll earn a microsoft innovative educator badge so you could add that to your resume and so on so with that, maraming maraming salamat. I'm very excited for the Q&A. Thank you for listening in. And back to you, Mark. Thanks, Pao. Grabe, sobrang um, earlier this year kasi, mga kay Eskwela, I had Pao in the, in the, in one of our events. In one of our events. Um, there's a lot of, of uh, interesting features from Microsoft during that time. So ngayon, bago na naman. I mean, like, bago, mas reloaded, I think, because, yun nga, in the, in the process, um, na-mention mo, pa yung day in the life of a student or a teacher working on a hybrid or a blended learning setup. So, first question pala. For this particular day in the life, um, when you map it out and, and using this particular context that we have now, um, do, how do you think um, Microsoft will enhance the learning process or the teaching process more because in essence the mention mo naman siya dun sa talk mo but specifically um that's that's one thing that our kaeskuelas are asking um this particular hybrid and blended learning setup will definitely be another uh context of adjustment for them so um how do you think microsoft can help in the hybrid and blended learning setup of of our uh, students and, and educators in the Philippines. Thanks, Mark. I think maraming areas, maraming ways Microsoft can help, diba? But I think one thing that stands out is really accessibility, diba? Accessibility in a sense that regardless kung nasan man yung student, nagko-commute man siya at home, at a beach, he or she should still be able to access these content. At the same time, it's device agnostic, diba? So regardless kung may magandang device ka, naka-mobile ka lang, naka-tablet, you still you'll still be able to access all of these content. But I think out of the many areas Microsoft can help, I'd like to highlight that accessibility because um, we're able to provide quality education regardless kung nasa man yung teacher or student. Thank you, thank you Pao. Another question here, yung question yung yung question niya came from the framework, the education transformation framework of Microsoft. So um, is this something that is agnostic that we can use in our schools? Because um, I know that schools would have their own education framework, but this one is a transformation framework uh, with, with, a, with different blocks on leadership and policy, teaching and learning, student and school success, and intelligent environments. Um, 
Is it something that schools can adapt? Yes, uh, that's a very great question, diba? That's the reason why Microsoft did not conduct the study ourselves, right? We commissioned a third-party research agency to do extensive research in terms of ano ba yung mga best practices ng ginagawa ng schools across the globe in transitioning to a more digital environment. So it's agnostic in a sense na hindi siya only Microsoft-specific uh, tools, right? But it's high level on how you can uh, implement those four key pillars. But of course, there are certain suggestions on how Microsoft maps into that um, ETF framework. But uh, short answer, it's, it's agnostic and you can introduce it to your school. Use it as a guideline, as a basis for your school. Thanks, Pao. And last question. Um, what is your message for our educators who are not yet still embracing technology? Because again, diba, it's, it's, it's something that is normal because if you're used to traditional, the traditional way of teaching, Bigyan ka lang ng blackboard, bigyan ka lang ng classroom mo, ready ka na. But this time around, it's a virtual classroom. But what is your message for those teachers who are still afraid or who are still challenged when it comes to using technology? Uh, my message, diba? Kasi I, don't th- I think this is a very common, especially when we introduce something new, a new tool, a new concept to anyone, right? So I think my message is really about uh, starting small, understanding what's the first thing that you can do in making this transition. Because admittedly, if ever you try to adapt everything all in one month, right? Ma overwhelm ka talaga. So it's really about taking small incremental steps, understanding what's the first thing that I can do uh, to start my journey in equipping myself on how to use the technologies. At the same time, understanding where can I get access for this learning and training content. So, like I mentioned kanina, we have a lot of free content at education.microsoft.com. You can start with technically zero knowledge on digital platforms and technologies and work your way up as you progress. So, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Pao. And thank you again for joining us today. Uh, maraming maraming salamat also to our 900 plus strong teachers who are watching right now. Thank you also for, for tuning in. Maraming salamat, Microsoft. And sa uulitin, we have so many uh, things coming up with Microsoft, so stay tuned lang po. So um, at this point, I'd like to announce the winners of our GCash credits and our eSquela online training course. So again, it's an online self-paced course uh, that is uh, dedicated, of course, for teachers who are adjusting to the new normal, to now normal rather, and also for those who would like to get eight CPT credits, make sure that uh, you partner with us. And of course, we will enroll you in this particular training uh, program. So maraming salamat po for for tuning in. Again, uh, thank you. And I'll see you next month for another episode of eSquela, our online webinar for digital learning. Thank you and stay safe.